sort of thing. Did you guys change anything at all in prep? Uh, no, not necessarily. Um, I think uh, with the Apex, it's just been, you know, I think I was doing good in the Apex because I was kind of at the end of my rope with, uh, you know, I, I was kind of like do or die for, you know, with the Sean Woodson fight and even the fight after that. And so, uh, and then losing, you know, in between, you know, the, the five fights that I had, it was, uh, you know, I kind of felt maybe a little bit of the desperation to uh, just, you know, go out there and show up and, and, uh, and showcase what I can do. Have you been trying to sneak a peek at Hakeem's weight or anything this week? Uh, Getting oh. reports on how he's doing? No, nah, man. I, I live here in Vegas, so I, I'm not even at the hotel. I don't even care. You know, he's he's gonna do his thing, and uh, I know he's gonna show up. He's a bit, you know, he's only five eight, so I know his weight's gonna be fine. Uh, I seen him here last time because we both fought on February 5th, and he didn't he didn't seem like he was cutting hard weight. So uh, I expect him to make weight. I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna make weight, and so uh, I think that's all gonna be smooth. Obviously, I know you can't tip your hand with the strategy, but given his approach, I know you like to go out there and strike and brawl a little bit, yeah. but is this a fight that maybe you might want to break out the grappling a little bit? I mean, maybe. I mean, I think I think every fight, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, mixing everything up. Uh, I think what just happens is just things go out the window. You know, when you get punched in the face and, uh, you know, your life's – well, not necessarily your life's on the line, but uh, when the fight is on the line, uh, you know, things kind of just come out. And I just, you know, naturally – my natural reaction is just to brawl. So um, I, I definitely want to grapple. I want to wrestle. I want to uh, strike with him. I want to do everything. Uh, but uh, you might you might see another Peterson fight where I'm just scrapping real hard. Is it, I mean, obviously you want to go out there and win every fight, but yeah. is this one some kind of special meaning? Like I don't know, like exercising a demon of like you know, the last time I was there it didn't go so well. Like, is there something to that in this fight? Yeah, for sure. You know, last time I fought the T-Mobile Arena, it was you know forever ago, and uh, Diaz was the main event, short notice against McGregor, and he shocked the world. So maybe that can happen again, but it just seems like it's a little bit full circle, you know. So uh, and it's nice, you know. I've had a bit of practice since the last time I was out there, and so. Uh, I feel like I'm a bit more comfortable. I was a young kid, you know, uh, in the fight game and a bit naive and uh, the first time I fought there. And so it was, uh, the, the lights got a li little bit to me. Um, uh, but, you know, like I said, I got a little bit more experience now and I feel like it's going to be a bit better for me there. Nice. Last thing for me, uh, you kind of touched on it there, but I know you're worried about your own result. But any shot, you might be like a Nate Diaz good luck charm or something. I mean, you were on the card last <laughs> time you shocked the world. Yeah, for sure. You know, maybe it'll happen. Uh, you know, and I think everybody's kind of rooting for him a little bit. You know, and just in the under in the in the underdog sense. Julian over here. Yes, uh, a lot of these fighters that they've pretty much only fought in the apex the last few years, and when they go into the crowd, they kind of downplay the crowd's involvement. But in terms of like the size of the octagon, you're a guy that you move a lot in there. Yeah. You're back and forth. Do, does that play any factor having more room to work in there? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I remember the first time I ever fought in the big, uh, the big UFC octagon. It was like it almost seemed like a football field. It was, it was huge. It was like this is insane. But also coming from you know a lot of guys on the regional shows, you know you're fighting in an even smaller cage in the apex. So like, you know, transferring from a small cage into that cage is is a bit much. But. Uh, you know, it's nice. I train at Extreme Couture, and uh, they have both size cages. They have the big uh, octagon size, and they also have an uh, apex size. So, um, it's you know, it's nice. I can use both of them and, and kind of get adjusted to that. And he obviously comes from very uh, high-level Muay Thai background. Yeah. So, how would you compare your striking to his in in, in MMA? Uh, definitely a bit more scrappier uh, and dirtier. You know, I'm I'm not as technical as he is, uh, for sure. But uh, I think um, I've given technical fighters a bit of a uh, issue with kind of, you know, being a bit dirty and, and making it dirty. You know, I fought Medi Baghdad in the Ultimate Fighter house and I won that fight. Um, and he was, you know, a world champion Muay Thai guy and, or kickboxer or whatever it was. And uh, I think I did that with my unusual, unorthodox style. Then I don't think during fight weeks you can escape all the Patty Pimblet questions. Given <laughs> your, your, so I'm going to ask you, what do you make of his meteoric rise uh, in the UFC right now? You know, I mean, he, he's doing good and, you know, good for him. You know, I think he just, uh, uh, I think he's a little, like, less active than most, um, you know, and that's his own prerogative. Uh, and I don't have any kind of, like, uh, resentment or anything towards Patty himself. Uh, when I fought Patty, I was a bit more upset with the whole situation of, uh, you know, his manager was also the promoter of the show. Um, I didn't even actually see him officially make weight. He was over a couple pounds and they said he was going to go cut the weight and come back and make it. 
And I ended up leaving because I just, you know, I was, it had been an hour and a half and I wanted to go eat. So I didn't even see him make weight. Uh, you know, just like small things like that that kind of just got to me. Um, but if I was in his shoes, I'd probably be doing the same thing. You know, I would, I would take advantage of everything uh, that he was taking advantage of uh, when I fought him. What do you make of the fact that he says he's like 200 pounds, right? He's fighting a lightweight. <laughs> Man, you know, I get it. I understand it. You know, when I'm out of camp, uh, I get pretty big. I'll get to like 180, 100. Uh, I've never been to 190, but I've been, you know, mid 180s. And I get it. I understand it. You know, you, you, you diet. You know, I think he said he had some sort of like eating disorder because of fighting. And, uh, and I understand that. Uh, but you got, you got to rein it in a bit. You know, if you want to be active, you want you want to not walk 200 pounds and have to cut, you know, 45 pounds every time, you know, or not necessarily cut 45 pounds, but eventually get down 45 pounds uh, within a fight camp because then it becomes a fat camp. Hey, Julian. Yes, sir. Do you have a favorite Juicy J song? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I came up with the, uh, the nickname Juicy J before... I uh, even knew there was a Juicy J from 3-6 Mafia, but 3-6 Mafia has a, uh, uh, a song with P Project Pat called Chicken Head, and I really like that one, <laughs> so I would say that's probably my favorite one. Thank you. Yeah, of course. We're good? Thank you, guys.